Hey there, this is Dr. Corey Gilbert, and here's a question from one of our um, Facebook group members. Um, they're talking about conflict, and they ask, we both reach a point of knowing what the conflict is, but don't know how to resolve or change so the conflict doesn't remain. That's the first part of the question. And then the second part is, another is sex. We have different drives and feelings towards sex. Now, the top two reasons for divorce tend to be money and sex, but they never have to do with money or sex. They actually have to do with communication, relationship, or a lack thereof of those two, really. So this one is an absolute key. Um, John Gottman has found in his research that he can watch a couple um, in a 20-minute kind of discussion in his office, all hooked up to machines, and he actually can tell whether that couple will stay together or not with a 90-plus percent accuracy, which is kind of creepy, based on one fake conflict in an office. This is very revealing. How we handle conflict is critical. Some of us kind of come into marriage with a lot of good skills that we've learned along the way, whether from family or just kind of life. Others of us walk in a little more crippled. We don't have some of those skills. We actually, I walked into marriage from a great family, but one of the things that I learned was to not conflict. And I had to learn how to engage in a relationship where there was conflict and it's us still be okay. Think of marriage as three people. This is not the whole like God and not that one. It's me, her, but then there's an us. So I need to be dealt with, you know, work, worked on. I've got growing to do. She does, but there's an us that needs investment as well. We have to invest in us. Time together, conversation, your sex life. Then it's a revealer how you handle some of those things and especially money becomes one of those. If you're handling money well, it's amazing how stress is lower. If you're not handling money well consistently, it becomes a, a high area of stress and at some point becomes a deal breaker. So conflict, we both reach a point of knowing what the conflict is. So there's a knowledge and awareness, but don't know how to resolve or change so the conflict doesn't remain. We can't get it to go away. Well, here's another secret. 69% of conflicts in marriage are not solvable. Isn't that crazy? The majority of our conflicts are actually not solvable in terms of the way that we're thinking about it. He'll finally change this, and he never, ever does. She'll finally stop doing that, and she never does. He'll finally start doing this, and never seems to ever get there. They start and then stop and start and stop. These are personality things. And a lot of times what we're doing is we're nitpicking these small things and making them really big, and we're obsessing. Now we become the problem. We stop obsessing about them changing something. And it's funny how the stress is gone and the conflict is gone. It might still remain or, which is really cool sometimes, they actually choose to force a change that they are intentional about. Why? Because I love you. That's working on the us. That's caring for the other person. Um, the kind of things you do to for fun. So the second part of this question is another is sex. We have different drives and feelings towards sex. Of course you do. You're two very different people. The stereotype is that men have a higher sex drive than women. And it's about 80% of couples he has a higher sex drive and 20% of couples she does. So in that kind of traditional model of him having a higher sex drive, she doesn't tend to have one. Or it is a very low one. Why? It's measured based off basically testosterone. So of course he's got a higher sex drive. And so you have to account for that. He's going to have a higher sex drive and want probably more sex than you, than her. So this is about relationship. It's about them then as communicating and talking and setting up a plan and being intentional about this part of the us. So that we're and then protecting each other. We're not using the other person. We're also not abandoning the other person. There's an intentionality about it. And I really believe this is part of God's critical design that just forces us to die to self, to serve one another, to love one another, to have patience, to be forgiving, and to grow. And it's a beautiful part of marriage when it's put in the right context. And I could say a lot more. I'll say more in future uh, videos. But this is a beautiful revealer of maybe the need to die to myself or to grow or to make new choices. And it's little tweaks. It's not big, drastic personality changes because those tend to be nearly impossible unless you have serious trauma to kind of force those. And I wouldn't wish that on anyone.
So bless you your marriage, and may you build a healthy, wonderful marriage that you're proud of. Hey, there's Dr. Corey Gilbert, and I'm so glad you checked this out. And if you're interested in more information, I would love for you to join my free Facebook group at facebook.com slash group slash The Healthy Marriage. The Healthy Marriage. Come, um, enjoy uh, videos, enjoy some teaching and training. Uh, we're just kind of building this right now. Got a few hundred people already involved. Um, and looking forward to serving you and blessing you in your marriage and helping you grow um, a healthy, strong marriage. Why? This is the centerpiece, the linchpin, the key to health in you, for you, your physical, your mental, your spiritual, for your family, your children, your career growth. This is so critical to the whole of who you are. So bless you, your family, and your family tree.